Look, I know how it feels. You want to be a brilliant 2D game artist, but you feel like you weren't born with any talent. Well, I'm gonna show you exactly how, it's gonna be really, really quick. I'm gonna show you how you can make your artwork look breathtaking, and you don't even need any talent. It's just a few simple rules with color. And by the way, this is taught in a free download below. It's totally free. It's a workbook for you. And everything I'm gonna show you here is gonna be broken down in this workbook step by step. So keep this video running, click below, download the workbook, it's totally free. And you can use it for all of your artwork. It's gonna be a huge asset for you in making game art. So let's jump into an illustration I created really, really quickly. This took like five minutes to create this illustration. And it looks okay, but there's a few problems. The first problem is, there's really no color coordination here. There's no color that looks breathtaking and beautiful or cinematic. There's no real theory here with the color. And also, things aren't really standing out. You notice my player here, he's just a cube. He's not really standing out. There's also no depth here as well. No real depth with the color. I'm gonna show you how to do that. The first thing we wanna do is consider our color theory that we wanna use. You can just Google color theory, and then I've got an image here, and we can just pick a color theory. We can use analogous color theory, triadic, monochromatic, complementary. Yeah, I'm gonna use triadic, okay? Triadic is actually really, really useful when it comes to landscapes. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a bar here. Just a simple, this is gonna sound weird, but I'm gonna create a bar here and I'm gonna fill it in with a simple gradient. And we're basically creating our, our, our color palette or our swatches. It's kind of like Bob Ross. If you ever watch a Bob Ross video, he starts mixing paint before he even puts paint on the canvas. We're gonna mix our paint here. We're not gonna create swatches inside of the swatches panel. We're just gonna do it right on the canvas, okay? So I'm gonna take this green here. I love that color. And by the way, if you wanted to change up these colors, you could certainly rotate the colors in this triadic wheel here. So instead of this pink, I could choose more of a purpley pink or I could choose purple. So you just rotate this, try to do it in your mind, but they also have tools for this online, and rotate those colors and start filling in this little rectangle here. So <clears throat> I'm gonna use this green color here for the gradient, and I'm gonna use this blue color here. Okay, I like that, good, good, good. It makes sense, I promise, it's gonna make sense. We'll go a little bit lighter, it's okay to be a little bit lighter in our method here, mm, yeah, no, let's let's go a little bit lighter here. There we go. Okay, so you might be wondering, what are we gonna use these colors for? Well, hang tight, hang tight. So we've got our gradient here, awesome. Let's go ahead and add darkness and lightness in the opposing direction. I promise this will make sense. I'm gonna add a light gradient here, good. And then I'm gonna add a dark gradient at the bottom. This seems like a bunch of overkill work Useless work, it's not. It's gonna help us so much, okay? So there's our darkness here. Good, I'm gonna merge all that together. So now we have this little pill shape, okay? One final thing I'm gonna do is right next to it, I'm gonna pick a color from our triadic theory, and I'm just gonna put it right here, okay? These are the colors I'm now allowed to use. That's it. When you lock yourself into color, as long as you're using good color theory, those boundaries, oddly enough, make your artwork look amazing. So freedom is not a good thing when it comes to artwork. Limitations actually help you out a lot. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply these colors to our artwork. So let's start with the sky, okay? The sky, we want it to be light and blue. And as we get closer, we go darker and green. So let's put this into practice. I'm gonna press I here, grab a light blue, and maybe go full white for the clouds. Clouds, you always kinda of wanna do a full white. Okay. I'm gonna go a little bit, I'm gonna go full white for these clouds and then these here. I'm just gonna go just a little bit wider here, a little bit wider or a little bit darker just for these clouds. Let's get rid of this. And then those are gonna be dark. The clouds tend to break rules because they're reflecting sunlight and they're very bright and white. But that's generally what we wanna do with the clouds. Let's go back to our color, um, our little color palette here. I'm gonna go towards the green and go darker. So really guys, as I pick colors, 
I'm going to be doing this, going diagonally. Okay. All right, let's keep going. A little bit darker, a little bit greener for these trees here. It's going to blow your mind. And then I keep going. I love this stuff. It makes me so excited because it's so simple. Keep going. Keep bringing yourself closer and closer. Good. A little bit. We could probably go a little bit darker there. Let's keep trying here. Good. Keep going. So we'll grab this one here. Fill that in. Look at this. Fill this in here. A little bit darker there. Maybe a little bit more. Good. This. Good. Okay. Maybe a little bit darker. Hmm. A little bit like that. Yep. Uh, we probably need to go full darkness here. Come on, grab it, Thomas. What, what are we doing here? Almost, almost. There we go. Good. And I can start adding a little bit more darkness here. So this will happen to me sometimes where my color palette doesn't fully go dark enough. And that's okay. Just go a little bit darker here. Good. And then almost full black here for the foreground. Okay. Then we're going to make our character pink. Anything that's breakable, interactable, movable should be somehow in some way have that pop of color. Okay. So enemies, we could have some enemies here, right? We could do some enemies right here, right here, right here. You could have some boxes. They're not always going to be fully that color. But it's ideal to try and incorporate those colors in the in the uh, game somehow. You can imagine I could maybe make my <coughs> character's head, you know, this blue color here, right? And so he's maybe got a pink sweater, okay? But we're just going to keep it like that. I'm going to remove this. And while we have time here, Okay, I've got a little bit of time here to just make it look a little bit prettier. Now that we've got our base colors, look how pretty this looks. Now that we've got our base colors, we can start adding some gradients really quickly. Okay, we're gonna do some light gradients here just to create sort of a horizon. Look at that. Very subtle, very subtle, nothing crazy. I can add either shadow gradients with dark. Grab that color, go darker. So I could do a little bit of a shadow here or I could do white to make it look like fog. I tend to like adding fog. Okay. And notice I'm pressing alt here, dropping that layer onto this one as a mask. And now I can add fog to all of this. This is water. So with water, we can do a little bit of a white on the top to make it look reflective. Just like that. I can even take this layer here and flip it vertically just so it's reflecting it just like that. Okay. I'm going to merge those layers together. We can add a little bit of a shadow if we wanted to on the top portion there, just like that. Add a little bit of white to the bottom to make it look like fogs pouring up from the base of the hill there. And then this, we could do fog or we could try and blend it in with the foreground there and make a little bit of a shadow. Okay. Really, really simple here. And Hey, let's finish it off with some beautiful, this is a hack I love to show. It's the cherry on top. It's always the cherry on top. Oh, Thomas, that looks bad. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? Well, hang on. Cut, cut. How about we do this? Let's cut that. Cut, cut. We'll get rid of this one here. Got some clouds. That's not my favorite cloud. Let's just copy this one. Copy, paste. We'll flip it. Go a little bit bigger and just drop down the opacity. And then that is beautiful. Something I love to do with pops of color 
is inside of Unity or our art software, however we want to do it, whether it's with post-processing effects in Unity, um, like the bloom effect, or we can do it in our artwork. I love to add a little bit of a bloom, two pops of color, just to make it look like they're almost emitting light. It looks really stylized. Everything, everything that I just showed you here is totally free. You can download it. I really want to see you guys succeed. You don't have to be a terrible artist if you feel like you don't have the talent. Just understanding a few, few sort of scientific aspects of color theory, it's gonna go so long for you. It's gonna go a long way, that's not weird. So click the link below to download that free uh, workbook and it's gonna guide you through this. So anytime you open up your artwork, open up that PDF and it's gonna help you out a lot. I'll talk to you guys later. Leave a comment below if you like this. Cheers.